Hello y'all on YouTube, this is Rob with Rob's Nerdy Knives. Today I have a really cool review, impressions of a prototype I got a chance to check out. This is the Mallory Designs Forest. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, it's P-H-O-R-U-S Forest. It's an S35BN blade steel, this particular one, but the actual production knife that they had for sale at White Mountain Knives, but I think they're sold out there, but they still have some on sale at their website. The link will be down below. Um, that one is on sale for, um, it was on sale, but it, it has S90V blade steel. So it'll be S90V blade steel, which is really, really nice steel. This particular one is the all blacked out one with the carbon fiber, the twill carbon fiber. I want to call it twill. It looks more like twill. Don't know if that's really marbled, but that's what it looks like to me. It is reversible pocket carry clip, deep mill titanium. I like the, the PVD coating, it's really nice. Captive pivot, as you notice, beautifully contoured. I like that nice shape. This fuller hole is really outstanding on here. So this is uh, designed by Mallory uh, Designs. And so they're the maker, they, I believe this was out, I'm not sure if it, this was a best tech or re-up made, but it's really nicely done. Really, really, oh no, it's Artisan Cutlery. Artisan Cutlery is the one who makes this one. Yeah, that's right. This is made by Artisan Cutler. It's got a beautiful touch to it. I really like this beautiful finger choil and all that stuff. So that is the knife manufacturer and it's done well. The action's really great. So let's look at the material. So this is carbon fiber inlaid, beautiful transition. You don't see anything stand out. I really like that. I think that's really, really nice. Uh, beautiful, you know, captive pivot. I do like that. I think these are T6s. I don't know if they're T8s on the production model. Um, so we'll just go by what I see here. I think these are T6s here and then T8s there. So, you know, I, I, I don't know if it's T8s. I don't have that information, unfortunately. I hope it is, but we'll see. Um, let's see what else. Um, it is nicely rounded all the way across, beautifully centered. Beautiful. I like that a lot. The clip is really cool. It's a little sharp and pokey right there. That would be like one of my only things. You can feel it. I don't know if they rounded the production version. That would be very interesting to know. I'm kind of curious about that. Um, uh, there you have the, it's a nice transitions and it's got some flex to it. So it'll go in and out easy and in the pocket it is a liner lock. This engages just up, I'm going to say about 60, 50, 60%, which is fine. Um, beautifully hidden out of the way. Nice access to that liner lock. You can see that. So it's easy to get to for, and the action's really nice for drop shut. I really, really like that. I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, and it's got a full back spacer all the way across. I know some people really like big back spacers. I sometimes like standoffs because it's easy to clean, easy to get to the knife, you know. This adds a lot of weight. Some people love that. And so, you know, you'll be happy if you want that. Now, this is kind of a sheep's foot, Warren Cliff, reverse Tonto, modified, whatever you want to call this. We'll call it whatever, right? Some people, the blade police will be absolutely correct me. It's a full flat grind, which I really like. Full flat grind. Comes to a really nice thin edge. It's a thin edge. We'll measure this in a second. Really nice, sharp, um, beautiful finger choil. So the materials are great. Uh, S90V blade steel, um, carbon fiber inlay, titanium body, and, and if you can see in there, there's not a whole lot of milling going on in there, but that's okay because this is inlaid with the carbon fiber. That's where the milling is occurring and where the weight reduction is occurring. I love the fact that it's reversible for left-handed carry. That's really, really cool. So the materials are great. The action is great. Close and open is great. Uh, you can do the finger inside there and flick it just like you can do you know the finger down low just like that for a flick as well um, you know you can do the middle finger flick right here as well because the full flat grind so if you don't want to use the fuller hole you could come come down here and the nice thing is with it being a liner lock and completely you know within the scales it's easy to uh, work as a lefty you know even as a right hand when you like to flick things left-handed it's very easy to get to and really nice i enjoy that a lot and the blade thinness makes this up just a beautiful slicer. I, I, I really, really like that. Uh, no, it's got a little detent lash in this thing here. So I, again, this is a prototype. So the production, I'm sure, is much, much better. I don't know. I don't have a copy of it. But you know, a little detent lash, and uh, you know, the thing about a prototype, you've always got to take it with a grain of salt, right? Um, I look at certain things that will be fixed when they run this production variant um, that probably won't happen here. Like, I mean, they may have an, they may have an insert here. They'll cover that. Um, these things might be rounded. You, you won't have that, you know, detent, uh, detent lash. And no blade rock is in there nice and solid. Yeah, there's no, there's no pivot lash either, so that's nice. It's really solid in there. You know, and the thing is, if this was my knife, I could take it apart. You can, you know, by just adjusting the liner lock, 
in there, the, the lock bar, you can actually get that detent latch to go away. Sometimes that can be just, you know, a little bit of use. People, you know, maybe somebody who was using this and, and, and the, you know, you've got a big burly guy who's super strong and they push way down like that instead for push across to release it. You know, that can actually misalign the, uh, the detent, detent ball on the uh, detent hole on the blade itself. So, you know, those things happen. Um, and, and there is some ways to fix some of those things. So, you know, I, I'm going to take that with a grain of salt. Just think about that, right? You know, I, I, I am pretty sure the production is going to be way better than this. So just, you know, I'm sure there'll be other re reviews and openings, people who have this and they bought the production variant and they'll have those really good experiences. So I like it. I like that. So that's, you know, good materials. Action's great. Closing. Frame lock is good. All that stuff. Let's go ahead and take some measurements on this. And let's just see what, what we got, what we're dealing with here. Okay. All right, so this knife is 3.44 ounces, so not too not too bad at all. 3.44 ounces is a it's a pretty good weight for a blade. Let's see what the overall length of this knife is. We're looking at one that is just just under eight inches. So we're looking at seven, and I'm going to say 15 sixteenths. Yeah, about seven and 15 sixteenths uh, for for the blade, right? And then we're looking for the handle right here. We've got a full handle. We're about uh, I want to say three and I want to say seven eighths, three and seven eighths for the handle. If you do the finger troll, that gives you almost five inches, four and seven eighths. So, you know, definitely great because if you have large hands, I have large hands width-wise, medium lengthwise, but large, plenty of room here. You can see all this room right here. So extra large, double extra large hands easily. You choke up, triple extra large hands very easily. There's no jimping up here, but it is flat. It does give you a good presentation. The contour holds you in place. So that is nice. I love all the round edges there. So that really helps, you know, as you hold that, but you get a good presentation for that. So I think that that's plenty of grip there. So let's look at the blade length. If you go from the tip to the handle, we are at three and a half inches. If we do full cutting edge, we're right at three inches. So depending on your state laws, some knife laws will say it goes all the way to the handle because this could theoretically be sharpened, right? Some will talk about just a blade. So you're right at the cusp. I, I would be real cautious if you have a three inch rule, you know, or three inch law. Just be careful, right? Just take that with a grain of salt. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and measure the blade stock thickness on this one. So we're at one, one point, well, 106 thousandths of an inch, so 0.1 inches. So it's just one tenth of an inch, really. One tenth of an inch, super thin blade, which is it makes it a great slicer. I really, really like that. I think that's pretty awesome. Knife category. Well, you are looking at a blade that's going to be costing, you know, in the realm over $300. So this is definitely going to be in the high end category. It's less than 600. So it's not in the custom, semi-custom, you know, mid-tech kind of category, but it is definitely high end, uh, less than 600, over $300. So just take that in mind. That's my category for that. Um, which is, you know, it, for what you get, the carbon fiber S90V blade steel. Now this particular prototype is S35VN, right? So it's, it's a, it is, it is a prototype, so just so you know. Um, but uh, I do like this a lot. You know, I think that's kind of cool for the materials you get and the, everything. Um, what would this be purpose? EDC? Yeah, absolutely EDC. Hard use? Well, it's a thinner plate stock. I would be cautious for hard use. Got a thin tip. Um, I mean, it depends on what your definition of hard use is, right? Are you going to be out in the, you know, bushwhacking and cutting logs? No, don't. Not, not hard use like that. You're talking about hard use like you're going to cut cake, cardboard, you're going to cut a lot of uh, envelopes, paper, you know, bags of, um, you know, dog food, cat food, mulch, fertilizer, whatever. Yeah, I mean, I think it could handle that. It'll be a pretty solid knife. You know, it'll definitely, I think it could, it could take that type of hard use. So, you know, maybe... Some people call that medium use, maybe light hard use. I don't know. Whatever your thing is. Is it a collection piece? Yeah, if you, this could be a collection piece. Some people like this aesthetic and everything. It, it For some, this would definitely, could definitely be a collection piece. And so, you know, I have collection pieces, but they are user collection pieces. And so anything I have in my collection is going to be carried. Uh, that's how I enjoy the knife. Even if I don't hard use it, right, it's still going to be uh, carried. So even collection pieces, I, I, I guess I kind of crossbreed between that, right? Now, a true collection piece that you never use, never handle, no, I don't have any of those. And, oh, excuse me, sorry, it's a little late on a Sunday. I'm trying to catch up on my videos. Sorry about that. Um, I guess, theoretically, you know, it could be a collection piece that you never use. That's up to you. It's what, what you design. Ergonomics. I like the ergonomics. I like the handle shape. It gives me a good grip. I like the fact that there's plenty of room there and you can definitely choke up, which makes this really nice. Great for like a precision cut, especially with that reverse Tonto, Warren Cliff, Sheep's Foot, Modified, whatever you want to call it, blade, right? Works really, really nicely. I like that a lot. 
So um, comfort there is nice. Uh, the little pokiness there, but you know, again, this is a prototype. So prototypes a lot of times get things addressed, like things like that get rounded off. I'm sure that came up, and I'm sure that was addressed because that you know that's that's catchy, and I'm sh I could just I I could not imagine that they wouldn't have addressed that, right? So. If they haven't, you know, the nice thing is if you don't get the all blacked out one, that's easy to buff off, right? That's easy to, to smooth out. If you get the all blacked out one, then you're definitely going to show that if you're going to try to smooth that out, unless you get it Cerakoted or, or PVD coated again or DLC, whatever this is, right? So there is that. Um, opening and closing is great. The, the, the fuller hold of uh, the finger, the thumb, thumb, Thumb hole, fuller hole, whatever you want to call it, really great, really great. You can get your finger in there and you use your nail. So, oops, and but make sure you hold the knife and it works really nice. You can do the, you know, hold it down like this and just easy flick, flick like that. That's really nice. You can use the meat of your finger and it works really nice. And it works both, you know, thumb as well, works really great. And it works left and right handed really well. So I do like that a lot. The, the opening and closing is great and the action is really nice. Of course, I'd probably put skiffs in there. Um, may not need it, but I always like to put skips in everything, and that make, may make this even better. It's not mine. It's, not, it's, a, it's a prototype, so I'm not going to do anything, take it apart, tune it or anything. But, you know, you could oil it, and a lot, of, a lot of times that breaks things in, too. And then, being that it's been passed around, it could be dirty. and clean it out. Action can even get smoother with all of that. So those are things that I, I would do. Uh, use pretty good uh, ratio here. Use uh, there is nice. It is, like I said, centered. So all those things are really good. Um, so overall, I do like that. It has a lot of positive. Now, as far as fidget factor, it is primarily a finger, um, a fuller thumb hole kind of deployment, but it's a nice long one and it's multi-purpose. Multi you could do the middle finger flick because it is a flat grind, so that works. That's a little bonus there. Uh, so it is limited to one thing, but it's done really well and it allows you for various um, you know, actions toward it. So. To me, this this does it really really well. You know, there's no thumb thumb uh, thumb stud getting in the way during your, your angle of your cut. Now things can get in here and get you know get stuck in there. You got to clean that out. But like especially if you're cutting fruit or something, you know that stuff will get in there. And you got to wash and clean that out. Um, as far as I, I give you know my knives a fidget factor. How you know it's very fidgety. That this this. Uh, fuller thumb hole is really nice and it's very fidgety i do like that a lot you know the f5.5 i actually ended up giving that a five just because it works so well and you could middle finger reverse flick it so i'm going to give this one a five too because this is done really nicely it is it's it's outstanding if you're going to do a fuller hole finger uh, uh thumb hole this is great i like it i like it a lot and uh, this is really very useful in so many ways. So I'm going to give it a 5 for fidget factor out of 10. And that, that's a pretty generous, you know, because usually when you have one means, I mean, I'm, we're usually getting a 3 or maybe a 4, but a 5 is because this is done so nicely. All right, so fidgety goodness as far as that that ability. Well, it is. It is a 95 to 100. I, I almost want to give it a 100, um, but I don't know. I... <sighs> It's an A+. Plus. It's absolutely an A+. Plus. It's like a 98, 99. Might take one point off. I don't know. Just because, I don't know. I mean, I'll give it 100. Yeah, well, let's go ahead. Give it 100. 100 on the fidget factor. It, it is pretty nice. I don't, I don't I didn't get to carry this, do a lot with it, because it is a prototype, and I don't want to do anything like that with it. But I will definitely give this, like, um, probably 100, so for sure. All right? So that's the fidget, fidgety goodness. Um, Really nice, really nice. And let's take a nice close look at this blade here. Let's look at that beautiful carbon fiber inlay. Look at that nice blade. Let's take a look at the back. You can see the, the deep mill pocket carry clip. Let's look at the liner lock here. And let's look at the back spacer that you have back there, which is nice. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close that. And let's go ahead and take a look at the back here. And we'll take a look here at the blade like that. I do like that Mallory designs right there. That's really cool. And I love the fact that it's a captive pivot. That really, really is a great thing. All right, so there you go. Um, overall thoughts, is it recommended? Yeah, I'm going to recommend this. I mean, it's it's a little more expensive, um, but I like it. I like it overall. I, I'm going with the recommended. I'm assuming this uh, detent lash has been addressed in the production model. And uh, those of you guys who, if you already own one of these and you have it and there's no detent lash, would you let me know in the comments down below for others to know? Because uh, I didn't get a production version of this. I, I was on the fence about getting one of these. It just wasn't quite my cup of tea um, for other reasons. And it wasn't because I didn't like it. It was because I just got other knives at the time. Okay, so there were other knives that were higher my priority. 
I thought it was cool. It was one of those that I wasn't sure until I handled it if I'd like it. By the time I finally got to handle it, you know, it was gone at White Mountain Knives, and um, then it was uh, you know, like sold out and things like that. So it's kind of a bummer. Yeah, I could probably get it from them directly, but you know, at full price, at this point, there's a lot of other knives that I'd be looking at more, okay? But very nice design, and the one I wanted was a plain one. I didn't want all the blacked out one. That, that's really the design that I liked the most, was the, the the plain titanium one. I think that would have looked nice in my collection, but that was hard to get and it wasn't available, so there you go. Um, yeah, overall, I do like it. I'm definitely gonna recommend this. It, it'll be a recommended higher-end knife, uh, for sure. Uh, so there you go. Um, that's my thoughts on that. Hey, if you have any questions, any thoughts, um, any questions about the review, about the knife, about the channel, please comment down below. I do try to react and respond to all those uh, questions and comments because uh, that's what I like to do. I enjoy the conversations with you guys. And uh, that's part of the, the enjoyment of me doing this, this channel is just really those opportunities to talk with you guys. Hey, if you found this content fun, interesting, worthwhile, entertaining, or informative, would you please consider hitting the like button down below? If you've already hit that like button, maybe consider hitting the subscribe button. Subscribing and liking the channel really helps me out a lot. It allows me to produce more content, do more things, ultimately more things for you guys. And anytime, any revenue I make off of that goes toward giveaways. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Hey, if you also enjoyed this content, maybe consider hitting the notification button so you can be notified of future content when I release it. And if you haven't already, maybe check me out over on Instagram at robs underscore nerdy underscore knives. Again, that's on Instagram at robs underscore nerdy underscore knives. Thanks so much for watching today. Have a great day and a great week. Bye.